The first Omen releases in theatres on the 5th of April, and to help you prepare for the release, here's a recap of the original The Omen. Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well. My name is Sarah and welcome to What the Horror, the channel where we talk about horror movies old and new. The first Omen is directed by Akasha Stevenson and stars Nell Tigerfree, Ralph Innocent and Bill Nye. The first Omen may act as a prequel to the 1976 The Omen and so doesn't continue the story, but it is still linked in terms of both the story and characters. So I thought it would be useful to have a refresh of the original. But if you have neither the time nor the inclination to either watch or re-watch The Omen, then don't worry because this recap has you covered. It goes without saying, well, hopefully it goes without saying that this episode will contain major spoilers for The Omen. The movie opens in Rome on June 6th at 6am. American diplomat Robert Thorne is rushing to the hospital where he is told that his and his wife Kathy's baby sadly died almost immediately after birth and that Kathy is still unaware of this fact. Robert is distraught, but a hospital chaplain, Father Spiletto, informs Robert that another baby was born on the very same night, another boy, but tragically his mother died in childbirth. Father Spiletto suggests that Robert takes the child as his own, with his wife Kathy never having to know the truth. Robert agrees to this and the couple take the child and name him Damien. A couple of years later, Robert is now promoted to ambassador to the United Kingdom, and so the family family leaves Rome and move into a beautiful big house in London, where they seem to live happily for a time. But things take a dark turn when Damien turns five. At Damien's fifth birthday party, after seeing a Rottweiler on the premises of the house, his nanny publicly hangs herself after telling Damien she loves him and that it's all for him. This event obviously puts a dampener on the party and is a very distressing event for Robert and Kathy but it's made all the more so when a father Brennan arrives at Robert's place of work with some shocking claims. Brennan claims that Damien is in fact the Antichrist and responsible for the death of the nanny, and not only that, but he will kill again and again until he has taken all that belongs to Robert. He says Robert must take communion as it is the only way to defeat the son of the devil. Father Brennan explains that he knows this because he was there at the birth of Damien. He saw the mother and seems to imply that she was a devil. Brennan says he wants to help save Robert and Kathy so that Jesus will forgive him for his own sins, presumably for any involvement in Damien's birth. Robert refuses to listen and has Brennan removed from the building. But as more and more strange occurrences happen, it begins to put doubt in his mind. A new nanny called Mrs. Baylock arrives at the house, despite neither Robert nor Kathy having employed her. Mrs. Baylock seems to be aware of who Damien is and has come to help him achieve his rise to power. The Rottweiler from before arrives at the house and is violently protective of Damien. Then Damien violently lashes out in terror when the family try to enter a church. And Robert realises that Damien had never been sick, not once in his life. Kathy, meanwhile, remains in denial that anything is wrong with Damien, until one day when she takes him to a safari park. She notices that all of the animals are distressed and terrified by Damien's mere presence. After this, she tells Robert that she wants to see a psychiatrist. Something just isn't right between her and Damien. Meanwhile, a photographer called Keith Jennings, who had been taking photos at Damien's birthday party, begins following Robert, photographing people around him. He'd noticed a strange shadow in the photo of Damien's nanny and wanted to look into it. He later notices strange shadows in photos of Father Brennan as well. It turns out that the shadows are actually foreshadowing the person's death. Father Brennan tries to warn Robert again, this time telling him that his wife is in danger. After hearing this, Robert agrees to meet with him. Brennan tells Robert that the Book of Revelations predicted the coming of the Antichrist that through a human form and with Robert's wealth and power, he will create a counterfeit kingdom on earth. Brennan tells Robert to go to Israel to speak to a man named Karl Buchenhagen, an antichrist expert who will help him. 
who will tell him how to kill the child. Brennan also tells Robert that Kathy is pregnant, but that she isn't safe, as Damien will not allow the baby to be born. Instead, he will kill Kathy and the baby before the birth. Distressed by what he's hearing, Robert again refuses to listen and leaves, telling Brennan he never wants to see him again. Well, Robert looks out there because only moments later, Father Brennan is killed, with a metal rod falling from the church roof, impaling him, just as Jennings' photo had for shadowed. A few days later, while at home, Kathy is tending to some plants upstairs in the house, and Damien is playing in his room. But Mrs. Baylock encourages Damien to ride his trike out of his room and round the house. He ends up riding straight into Kathy, knocking her to the second floor. She survives, but loses the baby. After the news of Father Brennan's death, Keith Jennings gets in touch with Robert and shows him the shadows in his photos, foreshadowing the deaths of both the nanny and Father Brennan. Jennings explains that he has been doing some research into Father Brennan and discovered that he actually had a birthmark on him in the shape of three sixes, the sign of the devil. Jennings had also visited Brennan's home and found the place covered floor to ceiling with pages and pages from the Bible and multiple crosses hung on the walls, as if he was trying to keep something evil out. Brennan had also been keeping a diary of Robert's comings and going, and had collected newspaper clippings from over the last five years, covering stories both to do with Damien or signs of his arrival. So for example, there was one of a comet sighting from five years ago, as well as a birth announcement of Damien. Keith Jennings offers to help Robert find out where Damien came from, because he is now personally involved. After having taken a photo of himself, he sees a shadow in it foreshadowing his own death. Once in Rome, Robert and Keith head to the hospital where Damien was born, but on arrival, they discover that five years ago, how convenient, there was a fire in the building that ripped through the maternity wing. It destroyed all birth records and killed all the staff except for Father Spilletto. He had survived, but was now burnt, mute, and partially paralysed, and now living in an old monastery. When Robert and Keith visit him looking for answers, Spilletto eventually directs them to a ruined cemetery just north of Rome. There, the pair find the graves of both Damien's mother and also of a child. Robert realises it must be the grave of his own son who died not long after birth. They open the graves and discover the skeleton of a jackal in the mother's grave, and when they open the child's grave, they discover evidence of it having been killed. Robert surmises that they killed his son so that they could replace him with Damien, and that it had been planned all along. This discovery scares Robert, and he calls Kathy in the hospital and tells her that he wants her to leave London and come to him in Rome. But moments after the call, Mrs. Baylock arrives and pushes Kathy to her death out of the window. Distraught by Kathy's death, but still wanting answers and a way to stop Damien, Robert and Jennings travel to Israel to see Carl Buchenhagen. Once they find him, Buchenhagen tells Robert how to kill Damien through the use of seven daggers to be used to stab and create a sign of a cross. Robert is reluctant, still believing Damien to be a child and feeling unable to go through with it. Jennings, however, scared for his own life, says if Robert doesn't do it, then he will. Moments later, as Jennings tries to recover the daggers that Robert threw away, he's killed by a sheet of glass. Robert is horrified by this, but it finally makes him resigned to his task, albeit reluctantly. So Robert returns home. Robert traps the Rottweiler in the basement of the house and kills Mrs. Baylock in self-defense when she attacks him. He then takes Damien to a church, but his erratic driving and behavior drew the attention of the police and they follow him to the church where they kill him before he is able to complete the ceremony and kill Damien. The film then cuts to Robert and Kathy's funeral, where Damien is now seen to be in the care of the President of the United States, and the film fades to black as Damien turns to the camera and smiles, implying that he has succeeded in his plan to find a position in power in which to rise through. Okay, so that is a recap of the original, The Omen. I believe, from what I've read, that the first Omen is a prequel to the original and not the 2006 remake, although the remake does follow the original pretty closely anyway. It will be interesting to see where they go with the story, um, what events they 
tell us led to Damien's birth. And it's also interesting that even from the original, they were implying that it was actually a part of the church itself that orchestrated it. Let me know your thoughts on the omen down below and let me know if you are planning on seeing the first omen either when it is released or later on streaming. I'm not a huge fan of it being a two hour long film, but I will definitely be checking this one out because I just, I love the original omen. If you are new here and found me through this episode, then please click the like button and subscribe button to join the What The Horror family. And if you would like to join these names here and get extra content, then there is a link to my Patreon page in the description box below. This week, my Patreons got my review of the newly released Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. But in the meantime, thank you as always for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye.